Hi everyone, a uh, very warm welcome to the CHS Open House this, uh, this Saturday afternoon. Uh, we are currently in the midst of our department talks um, and right now we are going to be talking about Chinese language and we have with us um, Associate Prof uh, Tam Xiaowei and uh, she's going to be talking to, uh, taking us through her presentation entitled Be an Expert in Chinese Language and sharing with us a little bit about the, about the department. Now, um, as, as uh, she's presenting and, and, uh, and as you're listening, if you have any questions at all, we will be taking questions using the Zoom Q&A function. So there is a tab on your, on your screen that you can click on. And from there, you can ask the questions that you have uh, along the way. Um, you can also view the other questions that have been asked. And if you have the same question, you can go and like it. And then at the end of the, of the session, um, I think uh, we, can, we can answer them um, together. Okay, so um, right now I'll just pass the time on to, uh, to Prof Tam. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, also, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, this session. And uh, so, so I am going to, so, as you know, my name is uh, Tan Xiaowei, Tan Xiaowei Lao and I'm from the uh, Department of Chinese Studies, um, so I'm from the uh, Chinese Language Division. And uh, is it possible for me to share my screen here? Yes. Yes, you should be able to. Give me one moment. And. Uh, Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, so um, if you went to yesterday's uh, talk given by uh, Prof. Ong Changwei, right, uh, you would know that uh, the Chinese uh, Studies Department uh, has basically sort of two main divisions, right? So that's the Chinese Studies or Han Xue Bufet, and then there's the uh, Chinese language, which is Han Yu's Bufet. And uh, so you, you probably know that uh, in both of these parts, you can do a major or a minor. Uh, we also so we also offer a minor in translation, uh, uh, the and you can combine these things in various ways. So you know you can major in Chinese studies, minor in Chinese language, vice versa. You can do double major. Uh, the one uh, less less attractive bit I think is uh, that if you major in Chinese language, you cannot really minor in. You can't minor in translation, although you can take, of course, uh, many translation re related modules. Um, but I, so these are the sort of the, the sort of just sort of an overview of uh, what you get, um, a, it's sort of the structure wise. Um, so my, I think it, uh, again, if you were interested, you know, and you went to uh, Prof Ong's talk yesterday, you probably know quite a bit about the. Uh, department. So there are some things that we can talk about later, sort of, um, you know, we uh, offer a bunch of uh, very attractive kinds of uh, scholarships and there are many uh, opportunities for winning prizes and so on. Uh, and, um, and we also offer some sort of um, that structure, so-called structured double majors with other departments. And so in this um, wider sort of interdisciplinary um, uh, oriented kind of environment nowadays, right? Uh, this will be a pretty helpful kind of um, option to have. Uh, but I want to focus a little bit more today on this notion of uh, what you do right, when you take uh, modules or when you major or minor in Chinese language, right? Because it's such a loaded term to say Chinese language and uh, So uh, if you're considering uh, um, studying, taking modules in the Chinese department, right? You probably have some training in Chinese already. So um, what is it exactly that you would do, right? It, uh, if you do Chinese language. So, uh, and so, so Chinese language is sort of uh, uh, um, really the name of our object of study. And um, the, the work that we do is probably better called uh, Chinese linguistics. Huh? So it is called Han Yu de Yu Yan Xue. So what exactly does that uh, constitute? Um, so I, what I want to do really is before I say anything, is to show you a little bit um, 
that uh, some of my students did uh, this, uh, what some of my students did this semester. So sorry about that. Yeah, okay. And um, I'm going to share with you a, a few. So I, I got them to, to make, uh, to, to provide in their final project to make some material that um, encapsulated what they thought, you know, uh, most interested them or most struck them uh, in the introductory uh, module to uh, Chinese linguistics. So I'm going to just share a couple that um, are easier to, um, and, and they all did very well, but um, I'm just going to share a few that are sort of quite telling. Um, so here is one. Um, well, this is not a video yet, but um, this is done in the. Uh, okay. So this is done in um, as a flyer to um, <laughs> a, a tuition course that you might enroll for. And uh, so I have uh, my students did this. Uh, my students did this. Um, flyer and um, they invite you to come and learn um, I hope I'm not blocking the screen in any way yeah okay so they invite you to come and learn um, these various things and you can see that they suggest uh, talking about phonology morphology syntax and a little bit about Chinese dialects and let me just click on one of the lesson links to show you what they are trying to suggest And so um, some of the interesting things, uh, they ask you whether you have come across uh, weird looking symbols like uh, these, right? And these are so-called um, IPA symbols. So the IPA is, uh, stands for International Phonetic Alphabet. And uh, it's a bunch of uh, symbols that try to represent as many uh, speech sounds that uh, we can find in human language as possible. So not just for uh, Chinese, right, but um, for a variety of languages. And some of what we did in the module was to see how uh, Chinese, the Chinese sound system is like, uh, if you sort of consider it uh, in terms of the linguistic properties um, that um, sounds can have, okay? So here's a chart of how you can analyze uh, various sounds and so on. Right, and these are what they do, and they tell you how to talk about tones in terms of uh, um, a more neutral kind of uh, sense. So, if you weren't speaking, uh, if you spoke more than just Mandarin, or you speak Cantonese, or you speak Hokkien, right? How are you going to describe the tones, right? And so, uh, we we also have ways of doing that, and that's one of the things that we learned. Uh, in uh, we 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 consider and and we actually learn in a Chinese linguistics class, and. Um, so here is another, and this is a video. I'm going to stop share because I need to make sure that um, I can, you can hear the sound. Okay. Um, so please let me know if you can't uh, see anything. Okay. So hello and welcome to another episode of Fun, Fun Facts, Facts with Faith. Faith. So recently I took a Chinese linguistics mod, and I want to share with all of you some things that I've learned. And actually, Chinese isn't too bad after all. Yeah, I'm such a convert. But yeah, I'm more confident conversing in Mandarin now because I feel properly educated. Sorry, um, so I'm I just sure Chinese took some of you off as well because just like I just want to check that um everyone can can hear can hear this because um I have to minimize the window. Yeah, and I can't see anything. Is you're all, all doing okay, right? Yes. Okay, so sorry. Let, let let me let me get back to let me get back to the video. Okay, so. Um, I see a, I see a message and um, are we okay here? Okay, very good, thank you. Yeah, so let me get back to this. Uh, sorry about the interruption. Yeah, okay, so here is Faith again. You've went through like at least 10 years of Singapore Chinese mother tongue education and you've memorized all the Cheng Yu's and the Hao Tzu Hao Ju when we don't actually know what we're learning but today I want to tell you that hey we actually only learned like the tip of the iceberg and there's so much more to the Zhong He Tian Kong and Li Jie Wen Da and all the 
，铃铃下课的铃声响了。So like going deeper, um, connected me to my roots and helped me learn like the foundations of the language and taught me a lot of new fun facts about Chinese. So I hope some of you out there would take away something from this video. So without further ado, let's dive into the fun facts with Faith Chinese edition. Today we'll be learning from one sentence. So let's. Okay, I'm going to pause this because I I want to skip to another uh to another bit. Which is sort of um, before I get interrupted by this thing. Okay, so I want to skip directly to this bit because we talked a little bit about phonology, but here's something else. Okay. Just because it is a Chinese character doesn't mean it's a word. So we take a look at ganga. Ganga is two Chinese characters, but actually it's only one word. Shocking. So ganga represents a a word with a meaning, and you can't really separate gan and ga. Like you don't see. Instances where we use gan alone and where we use ga alone, just like la zi, you can't use zi by itself, correct? Think about it. Also, Sinjiapo is a direct translation from English of Singapore. So, is Sinjiapo three words? No, it has three characters, but it's only one word, and this is a form of translation from another language. And the third fun fact that we have. Okay, and.、Uh... I'm going to this. This is from one of the videos, and here is another one. So this is about、uh, what we saw earlier that、uh, they called、uh, morphology. Okay, when you talk about word structure. Okay, and then here is another one which is about、um, dialects, and、uh, I'm going to share that too. So. 大家好，欢迎来到我的方言学堂第一集。我要先声明，如果我的方言说的不标准的话，请别见怪，因为连我妈都说了，你来教方言，卖丘西郎啦。今天我将专注于。Okay, sorry. Uh, so I I just want to go directly to um one bit, which is around here. Okay, so here she's talking about、um, one phenomenon in di in dialects called 文白译读 So the split between、uh, literary and vernacular pronunciation. So literary pronunciations are what you use、uh, for well, literary purposes, right? When you read from a book or、uh, when you are、um, when you have something、uh, from from sort of、uh, from from texts from older texts, and then or in people's names. And then、uh, the vernacular pronunciation is what you do when you have、um, uh, when you just sort of have, have daily speaking needs. Okay, so I'm going to just、uh, go a little bit further along. 潮州话和广东话比较少，闽南话的一二三四五六七八九十，文读是一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九、十。白读则是，一、两、三、四、五、六、七、八、九、十。以下有几个例子：十字路口，我们说十字路口，我们不说十字路口，因为它是个路名。九点，我们说九点，我们不说九点。马英九，白读音是。马英九好像在骂人，文读音是马英九。闽南话的文读音更加丰富，让闽南话显得更容易听，但同时也更难掌握。希望你在方言学堂里有学到不少新的知识，也对方言有更感兴趣。我们下期见吧，拜拜。All right, so, uh, all right, so I'm going to. Stop share now and come back to、uh, my own slide. So you can see a little bit、uh, of the、uh, range of material that is covered in. Uh, 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 this is basically an introductory module, but、um, uh, there is a there is there are opportunities to go further、uh, into each of these topics. And、um, let me find my、uh, PowerPoint again,、uh, which seems to be. Missing from here for some strange reason. Aha.、Uh -huh. Okay. So give me one moment. Okay. And let me.
let me share screen again. Okay. So, um, so to come back then a little bit more to the question of what uh, Chinese linguistics uh, is, right? Um, and you've seen a little bit about um, what this, uh, what, what we do talk about. So, um, it's so. So, if, if I want to give you sort of the standard um, uh, spiel as to um, what Chinese linguistics is, right? It, 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 you could call it the scientific study of the Chinese language or Chinese languages, right? And uh, basically, it's, there's a there's a there's both a humanistic component to it in that you really are studying yourself, right? You're studying what you know. And then, but there's also uh, very much a scientific method. So you would uh, gather data, observe it, make generalizations, develop hypotheses, much as you would do for other natural phenomena. So uh, some of the questions that we ask when we um, study Chinese linguistics is really, uh, some very fundamental things like what do you know when you know a language or what do you know when you know Chinese you know China, you, you hear a Chinese word you hear an English word you know they're different and what is what is it that you do know right and so we come about it from you know the sounds in this in the um, language the sentence structures um, how words are like right how they're formed and you can be you would be able to describe a language in, in, in these very sort of language internal very structural kinds of um, ways. The next kind, uh, other kinds of questions would be things like, you know, what's the difference uh, between a language and a dialect? And in the sort of Singapore context, this is a particularly relevant kind of question. A lot of us grow up um, knowing that uh, we have to speak Huayu, right? But then uh, you also know that your parents, maybe your grandparents, right, didn't do that, right? They spoke um, something we call a fang yan. And what exactly is the difference between these? And is the language a dialect? Is a, lang is a dialect a language? You know, these are questions that we also explore. Um, and another question, how did the language that we speak, right, get to be the way it is, right? So you know um, that, um, let's say, it's not just what we speak, but also how we use it. Um, so we, you know that in, in Singapore, we call Chinese um, the, the standard spoken Chinese, right, a hua yu. And then you, you probably also know that in China, it's called hua. Uh, in, uh, in Taiwan, people say guo yu, right, and Hong Kong probably also, although nowadays probably uh, the, the name is probably Putonghua also. And so um, how, how did this come to be the case, right? And then um, all, the, all the different trackings that we use, right, simplified characters versus um, uh, traditional characters, um, and uh, this Han Yu Ping Yin, and then if you might have been exposed to the so-called Zhu Yin for how the Wopo Mo for system, right, of phonetic representation, right? Um, all these various things that are uh, not just what we speak, but also what we see, what we read, what we use, uh, what we study, right? And uh, we ask questions like, how did it used to, how, how did things used to be like, right? Because um, if, if you come and take our modules, right, you'll know that Hyperion, of course, is a relatively uh, modern invention that came into being in like the 1950s, right? So these are um, all kinds of questions that um, interest us, and 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 they they all, not only so from from the reactions I got from my students, right, in in this particular uh, semester, especially, I think. Um, I, I I think many were struck with um, how that without it gave them confidence in their own knowledge of the language. Uh, one, of the, one of the frequent things, I used to live in the United States and I taught uh, Chinese also, ch the Chinese language, not just linguistics. And um, I would teach it to, um, I would teach it to um, students in the US and they, some of them started from zero. Some of them were uh, so-called heritage speakers, right? So they are, um, they, they, they were born, they are Chinese, but they are born in the States. And um, so the, the, the not so politically correct term is ABC, right? Uh, but I would, I had many students like that. And, um, and so, so um, and uh, they, some of them start to learn Chinese um, after they go to college. And um, then sometimes I would meet Singapore, students from Singapore and, uh, and if they spoke Chinese, right, the, the, and even now when, I, when I've come back and I meet students who use Chinese, right, a lot of the first reactions I get is, oh, well, the Zhongwen Hanlan, okay. And um, so, so it, 
Uh, but but if you if you come to uh, uh, study Chinese linguistics, right, one of the things you um, start to realize is that you already know a lot, right? Even if you don't know all the Cheng Yu you're supposed to know, right? Or even if you don't uh, know all the uh, Dian Gu you're supposed to know, right? When you read some uh, poem or other, right? Um, you you already know a lot, and uh, you, you and what this study of Chinese linguistics does is to sort of sort of bring you in touch with all the quite implicit knowledge about language that you have and as a native speaker or a heritage speaker that um, um, foreign language learners don't don't necessarily have access to so uh, and so, so this is one part right? another part is you as my student earlier mentioned in her video right is that you do get to get in touch also with the history with the geography right in terms of uh, knowing about the different dialects where they're usually spoken and uh, I know a lot of people a lot of students nowadays um, care very much about being able to uh, work in China or uh, be able to um, um, somehow develop further in their careers right it, with, with, uh, with some Chinese skills and if you know a little bit about the history and the sort of geographical spread of the dialects and so on right um, it, it, it gives you a, a, a quite interesting sort of um, doorway into conversations with other people who might uh, become your colleagues or become your collaborators in uh, your future work I mean it, Based on my personal experience, and I'm sure you've you've seen things like that, right? If you meet someone and you know a little bit about their dialect, right? Not not just a shared common language, but the dialect that they speak, right? People are usually very happy. And so, um, the, the, so so he, the, so these are um, not just sort of more technical things, but also the more sort of humanistic um, uh, topics, right? That um, you also get from. Uh, to, from working a bit more on uh, Chinese linguistics, okay, um, and so so in, in tandem with this kind of uh, with with this kind of uh, theme, right? Um, there are a couple of other questions that uh, you can uh, you you can imagine people asking. So uh, if one one way of asking how Chinese used to be like, right, uh, could lead you to this kind of result. So I'm going to play you uh, a little. I hope you can hear this. Okay, please, please let me know if you can't. Um, so, it's to, so I'm going to play you a little poem, tongue poem that somebody reconstructed. Um, so this is so we really don't know whether the tongue poem did sound like that, but uh, we can make a good guess that it might have. Okay, so uh, let's see how to play this. Okay. Jiang Ya Si Liu Bak Jiang Zhen Miang Ngot. Okay, so I don't know if you recognized it. Uh, you, if, if you if you are curious or if, if you might have recognized it. Right? And uh, you can always ask me later on uh, during the question answer session and see if you got the uh, if, if you guessed right which poem it was. Okay, and um, then a couple of other questions. Uh, for instance, uh, we, we try and discover right, what you are sensitive to when you use different uh, when you say different things, right? What are the kinds of um, um, environments or contexts? Right, in which you would choose to say your ren versus your wo. So I'm just going to give you one example, right? Uh, versus what dai li mian. So I'm just going to give you one example. If you are in the bathroom, right? So if the bathroom is at home, right? If you're at home in your bathroom and somebody knocks up, somebody tries to come in, right? And thankfully you've locked the door. And you, you, the first thing you would say is not your, well, most likely you would say wo dai li mian, right? Okay. But if this, if you're in the bathroom and you're in a shopping center, right, and you've also locked the door, but somebody doesn't know and tries to open the door, right, you're not going to say what's that limit, right? You're going to say your ren, right? Okay. So these are all these uh, very um, somewhat similar contexts, but um, but different in, in important ways, and then they will affect the kinds of things that you say, right? And uh, so in in our study, right, this is also one of the things that uh, we might be able to invest, we might, we might be interested in investigating. 
So I'm going to um, skip over the next couple of slides because I don't have, uh, I, I want to leave some time for um, people to ask questions so we can always uh, discuss more if you like. Um, other things that we uh, are interested, one might get int be interested in is uh, with the script right, and how it gets used in different places. So if you look at this headline, right, you might be able to, without without more information, right, you would probably still be able to tell me where this headline comes from, right? And also, um, so if you you can see from here that it comes from Hong Kong, right? Okay, and then of course, um, something like this, right? This is a very Singaporean kind of utterance, right? So again, these are uh, things that we might study in, uh, in, in, in a you, you might get to study in a Chinese linguistics module. Okay, so uh, I'll just talk a little bit more about um, the modules that you might encounter. So, um, as you know, uh, each department has its own uh, exposure modules, and since we have two majors, right, uh, we have uh, so we have one on the Chinese uh, on the Chinese studies side, which is called retelling Chinese stories, and Prof Hong talked about yesterday. Um, and uh, in on the uh, CL side, right, we have something called the Chinese language past and present. And so the videos that you saw earlier were uh, from students who had taken that module. And this is a bilingual module, so you can choose to um, so. Uh, as um, so, you you probably know that if you want to complete a major in uh, CL or CH, right? You pretty much have to work in Chinese, but it, but just to take modules, right? You can actually take a variety of modules in English, uh, and uh, and but then it, it, the exposure modules are both of them bilingual. So the professor will talk in, you know, sometimes I, I talk in English, sometimes I talk in Chinese, and what my 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 so I do teach that module, and uh, my usual way to do it is to start out with English. And then progressively uh, get more and put, put more and more Chinese into it. And the, the idea is to have people have some time to acclimatize themselves to uh, this the, this uh, to this change because the idea is to also prepare students who want to um, who want to major or to, to do more modules in Chinese, right? To have a way of ramping up, right? To something that um, uh, it, it, to, to, to using the language in a more academic fashion. But I do start, in, uh, start off a lot of the lectures in English. And then um, tutorials, it depends on how students, uh, what students prefer. So if there are more students who prefer one language in one, in one class, then uh, that's, how, uh, that, that's the language that gets used. Um, readings are provided in both languages. Uh, you can complete your um, assignments in either language. So uh, that gives you a little bit of flexibility and um, to also get, gives you some time to become more confident uh, with your uh, Chinese. Um, but besides, so, so, so besides the um, uh, sort of more linguistically oriented uh, modules, the, the, the prop linguistics modules proper, right, which I'm going to uh, get into a little bit more. Uh, you also know probably that uh, the department will, does offer a bunch of uh, general education modules. And th this is relatively um, old, right? That the coding will change because of the uh, new uh, college of humanities and sciences. And uh, uh, so the, the cur curriculum is going to make certain changes, right? But here are some of the, uh, here, here are the modules that, that are, are offered or have been offered. And some of them do involve um, linguistics um, or Chinese language um, related um, expertise a bit more. So one of these is the bridging East and West, exploring Chinese communication. Uh, one of these is I think the La Copy, which uh, does involve um, also the use of language in Singapore. Okay, so um, well here, are, so uh, if we come back to uh, the Chinese major or minor, right here are the essential modules that are involved in uh, the major, and um, you can see again that uh, we talk about the sounds, the structure, right, um, and we also talk about um, the uh, characters, and then of course this is the uh, introductory module, right, and there are some there are some other things that are uh, more that, that that give you a, a grounding in um, the history, right, and then the literature and the development of Chinese literature, right, and th this uh, this is because if you 
uh, study the language up to a certain extent, right? You will have to deal. You well, it, there's a strong possibility that you will deal with historical um, facts and historical texts, right? And so it's always good to uh, get a grounding there as well. And um, here are some of the other uh, kinds of uh, modules that you would find uh, in the on the Chinese language side. So you will see. Sorry, uh, uh, I. I I hope it's okay if I speak some Chinese here too, right? But you can see that uh, so uh, right, sound, uh, structure, sense of structure, uh, so basically the vocabulary, right? Lexicon and vocabulary, right? So the, the, this is about meaning, right? Uh, pragmatic, so um, how your social setting, right? How um, you, you, uh, your, the purpose of what you want to do with your language is going to affect it, right? Um, the relationship with uh, culture, right? You young, you want uh, social linguistics. So linguistics itself is is very much in keeping with a sort of interdisciplinary uh, tradition. The way it was born out, right? I mean, um, the 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 whole uh, linguistics tradition um, or, or modern linguistics tradition, right? Very much has 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 um, some ha has a strong relationship with psychology and cognition. And so one of the um, questions that pe people are interested right, in learning is about is really how, um, how why, it, why it's so easy right, for little children to learn a language that, and, and you can have like thousands of experts work on a language for years and years and years and still not know that all these secrets that you know, uh, allow a child to learn uh, to, 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 to be able to use this language in like three years right, quite, quite, quite easily. And, um, and so it's very hard to make a machine, for instance, that is going to be able to do that. And um, so, so these are, um, so, so, besides, so besides a relationship with say psychology, right? And you can see here that you can study uh, linguistics uh, or language right, relevant to um, the society, right? So societal um, um, structures, right? And um, um, power relations, um, gender relations, right? Uh, these are various things that might, that might also um, come up, right? Also, a stylistics is useful for, uh, uh, it is, it's quite um, um, uh, popular with students, right? Who actually want to go into, say, the media and be able to uh, uh, apply certain kinds of ideas in their writing. Um, then, of course, if you go on to the uh, higher levels, you can learn more about dialects, uh, about philology, right? So, the study of texts. Right, and then also about it, it, traditional. Do do more about traditional Chinese phonology. Okay, um, so as I mentioned earlier, there are a bunch of structured double majors that um, our department offers uh, relative to, to CL itself. Right, uh, you can you can double major with CH. Right, I'm so sorry, I don't know why it became became a J. Right, and you can also double major with EL English language, right, which is or, or English linguistics, and uh, you can double major with global studies, right. Um, I, although I presume the more popular way is to do that in combination with uh, CH, but you can also do it in combination with uh, CL, which is uh, Chinese language, right. So Chinese language, Chinese uh, studies. Okay. Um, then I want to move on a little bit into the minor in translation. Um, so. Uh, so there are that there are two uh, basic translation modules that would be essential to this, and then you would choose from a variety of other modules. Uh, it, again, under the new structure, you 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 need I think uh, five modules to complete a translation uh, to to complete a minor. So uh, that there is um, so besides the essential modules, you would basically pick like three, right? And uh, we are also considering um, right now. Um, try, trying to see if we might be able to offer a minor in uh, interpretation. Uh, that's, that's still very new and there's nothing confirmed yet, but uh, this is something that uh, it, the department is hoping to um, strengthen and develop further our translation and interpretation offerings. So I think this is also something to look forward to. And here are some other modules in translation. You can, um, some interesting things like subtitling, right, or, um, mass media and uh and computer resistant translation tools and so on um 
one of the one of our big draws, I think, is that we do have someone who is a practicing interpreter who teaches our uh, introductory interpretation module. Um, so, um, so, so Mr. Li Hui. Before you end, right, it, uh, it has been translating in Parliament, in the Supreme Court, and it, it, and you you probably heard his voice in um, so, some of the National Day uh, parade um, uh, uh, casts, uh, broadcasts. Okay, and um, what what he has uh, and what he, and, and he, he does uh, allow people and and his his connection right does. Uh, allow people to see uh, the, the more practical side of what you might be doing with a trans with an interpretation um, background. Um, then there are some other attractive uh, aspects of um, the Chinese department. So um, there are a variety of uh, scholarships and prizes to be won. And one of the uh, very interesting ones is the Chinese Studies Major Scholarship, which is uh, open to all major students and up to a third year of study you can still apply and uh, there are amounts depending on whether you major uh, single major double major uh, whether it's your first or second major right um there are the, the, there are the, uh, the, the amounts of the award which uh, would, would, would that there would be a range of the amounts of the award okay uh, there are a bunch of other prizes and you can all see this on the website and you you might have seen this somewhere else so i won't uh, belabor the point much more just to know that uh, um, this, this is also one other cool bit about uh, the Chinese department. Okay, and um, if you have, and then of course, uh, one of the things that people are always worried about right, is what can I do with it, right? And again, if you heard from Prof Ong yesterday, right, there's a lot of, there's a lot you can do uh, with, um, with Chinese, with, with a degree in, in Chinese language or Chinese studies. And um, here are some, um, Pretty much anything that you can do with uh, uh, with with an with an arts um, or so, uh, yeah with, with an arts background, right? Uh, you would be able to do with um, a Chinese um, related um, degree. And uh, I, I personally have also met with friends who uh, I I know a friend from Hong Kong who used to be a work work in a consulting firm, and apparently she told me that um, a client she worked with. Was, was very, I mean, she, she, I mean, she's from Hong Kong, so, so she, she does a lot of Chinese, right? But a client was, was telling her that it, it, was, it was very difficult and very important for them to uh, find people with a Chinese, um, with, with, with good Chinese language skills and good understanding of Chinese culture. So um, it's definitely going to be an asset, right? If you, if you have some Chinese related um, uh, background in your, uh, in, in, in your um, university education. Okay, so I want to end with this little photo from a field trip that uh, our uh, interpretation uh, uh, faculty member uh, took, took his students to, and I went along with them for the ride. And th this part was uh, uh, to, to Parliament where we got to see how the translators, how the interpreters work. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and uh, leave a little bit of time for questions. Hi everyone, so if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them on the Q&A tab. Um, you can ask your questions there and, and view other questions that have been um, asked as well. Yeah, but maybe while you, you are thinking of your questions, um, Prof Tam, are, are there any like common questions that you usually receive um, at an open house about, about Chinese language? I guess the burning one would be, would be what do you do uh, with, with this degree afterward? Um, and I can totally understand that as, a, as an English language major. <laughs> yeah, but are there other, other questions that, that, that you often get from students or even from, from parents maybe? Uh, yeah, I think that the, an, an interesting question I did get from a parent one time when we still used to have these, um, you know, uh, big open houses with people, right? Not, not online, right? And uh, what, one, one parent came with her, uh, what, one, one mother came with her, with her daughter i think and 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 she, she got to talking with us and and she said um and she sort of asked a little bit about what we do right so i i told her a little i, I spoke a little like you know stuff that we study you know structure of language and so on and her parent was very concerned and she said um so it's stuff that they've never done before right and so so i thought that was a very interesting kind of comment and and i do want to 
Uh, I do want to say that yes, you know, at, at university, at the university level, right, a lot, a lot is something that you have not done before, right? And you should take this as a good sign, right? Because um, some of you are paying, right? <laughs> and you want to learn something that you haven't learned before, right? And um, you, you, and and uh, we hope that this is also material that will. Uh, inspire you to think more and to know yourself a little bit better and to know your world a little bit better. Yeah, so I do see one question here. Um, if I'm able to take individual modules as breath, such as, even though I'm not a student of Chinese studies, uh, yes, yes, in fact, I've had many students, well, ma not many, but I have had the occasional student from uh, outside, of, um, outside of CL or, or CH, and so I have had a variety of students from engineering and they usually do quite well in, in linguistics courses actually. Yeah, and um, it, it, that, that, because that there is one technical uh, bit that I think they, they tend to like. Yeah, so, so you, you can definitely, you're, you're quite welcome to, um, to, to do the uh, CL, CL modules even though you are in the engineering school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a question here about um, the uh, double major in Chinese language and English language. Are there many people um, taking that combination? Uh, not many that I know of, but I do know that I, I do know of at least one. Okay? <laughs> at, at least one, and um, so so they, they they do exist, right? And I I expect there to be more and more actually. Um, I, I do think that first with, with the option that we do offer, because that will allow you to do so-called double counting, right? So you can, so some of the modules will go towards both majors, right? And um, I also know recently of an incoming student who told me she wanted to major in uh, Chinese studies and English literature, which is a slightly different variation, right? But I think it would also require uh, that you have strong interest in both of the languages, right? And, and, and I do think there are more and more students who are like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get more of these uh, eventually over the coming years. Mm -hmm. right. so, yeah, I can certainly see that being uh, 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 working together, I think. Yeah, maybe I would be more interested if my, if my Chinese were better. <laughs> um, uh, we, do, we do have another, we do have another uh, uh, question here, which is in Chinese, so I, I don't think I'm going to try to... Okay, so it's more detailed to show you how you can use the language and the language. Okay, so the language and the language are not my specialty, but I can talk a little bit about it. I understand that the language is more related to your writing skills, and your writing skills, and your writing skills, and your writing skills, and your writing skills, 呃，怎么说呢？就就就就是一些方式，比如说，呃，比喻性的语言，呃，或者是，嗯，那个，嗯，或者是某某一些，呃，或者是，嗯，比如说某种有排比性的一些呃手法哈、啊。所以是我觉得更多是这样子的，就是说涉涉及到你的一些写作手法这样子的呃一种内容。然后训诂学呢，它比较多的是说的是，呃，我们现在说现代语义学哈、啊，学的就是说这个语言。呃，成分，比如说词汇啊、呃，它表达的是什么样的内容哈？那么呃，训诂学它有一点像这样子哈，但是它更多的是说，嗯、呃，会涉及到呃，就是古代的古代汉语里面的呃词义哈，因为很多训诂学它的起源，我据我的了解了，它的起源是说。呃、嗯，中中国这个汉语的历史非常悠久，对不对哈？那么比如说，甚至到了就是呃秦代哈，或者是唐宋哈，那么。在在那个时候，对我们来说已经是相当遥远的一个年代哈、啊。他们已经是对先秦的很多典籍，他们已经是没有办法很好的阅读了，对不对？因为语言已经有了改变哈、啊。所以训诂学它其实是呃为了要就是呃要了解就是古人的语言啊。那么呢呃今人要读古书，然后呢这样子产生的一个学说哈、啊，对语业的语呃古代的语义，然后呢这个词义的变化的一种。九哈，所以差不多是这样子的一种一种情况。我希望这个稍微清楚一点啊。My know of CH or CL will be a more suitable major if I aspire to be a Chinese script writer. So, uh, I okay, much as I want to have more students for CL, right? <laughs> But I think if you want to be a script writer, CH is more likely going to be the um 
more likely going to be the more suitable kind of major because um, we will get uh, more further depth in um, the history, uh, the literature, right? And um, the uh, uh, phil philosophical traditions, right? So if you plan to, let's say, write a historical drama, right? <laughs> then uh, you, I, I believe a, a, CH, um, a, a, a CH major would, would serve you very well. Um, but there's but CL also gives you many inroads into uh, you know history um, and other um, into other um, um, aspects of Chinese culture. So uh, you might consider double major. <laughs> so so I I always joke that the way I learned about Chinese history was really from from sort of. Uh, from, from language related kind of material, right? So, because I like poetry, I like, I also like Tang Shi, I know Tang Dai, I like Song Tzu, I know Song Chao, I know Song Chao, I know Song So, it really depends on yourself, right? How, how you, how, what you respond to, right? And either way will we'll take you to a place that is suited for you. Okay. Can you tell us more about English lit majors who also pursue higher Chinese language studies? Don't and what is the mix of linguistics and literature in Chinese language as offered by English Chinese studies department? Okay, uh, so yeah, I uh, I don't so so this is a I I I just mentioned the English lit majors and uh, Chinese language studies. Uh, so because I have encountered a couple of them, a couple of students who were interested in this direction. So and I mem uh, and so what I understand is that I mean you you would have to want to do it yourself, right? And so if if you like both uh, very much and you have a strong command of both languages, right? Then th there is a way, uh, and it, especially in the current CHS, right? You would be very much encouraged to do a double major, right? Um, and so, and, and also that I expect there to be more students uh, with this kind of um, with with this kind of um, um, orientation. I think, right, sort of bi bilingually, both very strong. Uh, what is the mix of linguistics and literature in Chinese language as of? So, yeah, the the mix is really they're quite independent, really. So you have the uh, you you have a Chinese studies side and you have a Chinese linguistics side, right? So there, uh, and you can do. Uh, Chinese studies without uh, much, uh, without having very much to do with Chinese linguistics, and same thing you can do Chinese language, right? A Chinese language major, right? With not very much of Chinese um, studies, um, there are in the essential modules, right? Some um, there's some overlap, right? So if if you do a CL major, right, you are still required to do um, Chinese history and uh, history of Chinese literature, right? Um, and these are CL uh, modules, right? But um, otherwise, you are you you can do a, a major in either, and be sort of relatively, you know, um, not 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 have to worry too much about the modules uh, from from the other side. Okay, so I, I hope that helps. Okay, yeah. So uh, I think we've we've covered all the, the questions that came in through the Q and A uh, tab. So thank you very much, uh, Prof Tan, for 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 sharing with us and for answering these questions from uh, from people who uh, uh, who have been attending. So uh, right now we are going to run a, a little poll um, to get some feedback on um, the session. So if you have been uh, been with us for for this session, we will really uh, we will really appreciate your feedback. Uh, if you can just answer them real quick. That would be great. Um, and then after this, we are going to head on into our um, two o'clock session, which is on language studies, language studies. Um, yeah. So uh, you can you can uh, hang around in this room if, if you're interested in that. Yeah. Um, or you can also continue to uh, uh, look at the rest of the schedule on our website, chs.nus.edu. Dot sg yeah so um, for now of course if, if you have any more questions about um, Chinese language or about CHS in general um, you can uh, continue to uh, speak to us and, and, and keep in contact with us via email so at askchs I think we have we have the screen coming on yeah ask chs at nus.edu.sg or you can drop us a phone call during office hours yeah. 
Um, of course, you can also uh, uh, visit the Chinese language um, uh, website. So that is fass.nus.edu.sg slash CHS. And you can um, uh, ha have a look at the, the material on there as well. Yeah, so um, if there is nothing else, then I think um, we're going to thank you once again, uh, Prof Tan, for, for, for being here. Yeah, and then um, we will head on into our next session at 2 p.m. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Having me. All right. And uh, so, if, if there are questions that come up that come up um, about CL, right, or the, the department general, feel free to send me an email. I'll try and direct them in the right way at, at least. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay, so um, yeah, like like just as I mentioned, we, we will be continuing at 2 p.m. with the session on language studies. So we'll see you then. <laughs>